So I looked at the topic of what's happening in the brain when we deal with money. And there's a part of the brain that activates, it's called the nucleus accumbens. It's deep within the sort of evolutionary, uh, the oldest part of the brain. And they compared people who make money to those who are high on cocaine. And remarkably, the brain scans were almost identical because there was activation in this part of the brain called the nucleus accumbens. And they've also looked at uh, brain scans of people who are high, uh, look, looking at uh, women, naked women, dead bodies, and money. And what got the most activation? It was money. So money obviously acts as a neural stimulant, and it, it makes us act in very sort of irrational ways. And so the part that the brain that lights up, again, the nucleus accumbens, keeps on firing and firing and firing, and obviously money excites us. The nucleus accumbens is part of the reward center of the brain, and it's part of uh, the, the brain that activates when you're excited, when you're aroused, when you're feeling um, happiness or, or even joy. And obviously, the, it's, it's part of the, um, there's many parts of the brain that activate when using money, but this is where it's concentrated, where we process rewards. And brain scientists have been able to scan your brain, and they say, okay, you can invest in a, st uh, a stock that's more risky, a conservative bond, or um, something that's no, no option at all, like a, like a like cash, right? And so they find that if there's activation in the nucleus of Cummins, you're more likely to take the riskier option. I mean, you're more likely to choose a stock. Well, if, you, if you, there's activation in the insula, which is the anxiety center of the brain, you're more likely to be risk averse and you're taking on investing in the bonds. So what they find is that obviously what happens in the brain can predict what your financial decision is. Decision making, our financial decision making is made in what's called a subcortical region below the neocortex, or what we all know is the subconscious level. For example, um, when you sit outside on a sunny day, you're more likely to tip more uh, for the waiter. You, you feel like you're in a better mood, the, the sun affects you, and you tip more money. Whereas if you sit, on, sit inside, you tip less money. So researchers went back and looked at this, and they said, well, one thing that we have really good data on our weather patterns over the last 80 years. We also have really good data on stock market prices, over 26 countries, and they found that sure enough, over 80 years, that the markets were up considerably, and annualized over 25% on sunny days versus those cloudy days. So it goes to show you that our brains are constantly being bombarded by all kinds of effects, the weather, how, I, I service investors for a living, and I never heard a professional investor say, hmm, how does the weather make me feel? How should I invest? But it's clearly having an impact on us. So the takeaway here is we should be mindful of how the brain, has, how money has a physiological change on us, right? So when I mentioned the word money to you, the thought of making money increases your skin conductancy. You're getting excitement from it. So a takeaway is just to be mindful that a lot of our financial decisions making are being made even when we don't think we're making them. Money is having an imperceptible effect on us. One of the things the research finds is that when they flash the price of, a, of an object to you, um, the part of your brain that activates is the uh, prefrontal cortex, meaning the part of the brain that sort of makes us human, the, the part that evolved to, to give self-awareness and reflection. So when, a pr when we see the price, that part of the brain activates. And when the price is too expensive, the insula activates, which is again part of the uh, fear center. And when you make a bad financial decision, you may feel it in your gut, and there's actually a reason for that because there's a part of the, there's a cell called a spindle cell, and it's, there's some spindle cells in your stomach, and that they're connected to your insula in the brain. So when you make an irrational financial decision, when you put money in that stock and it falls precipitously, you feel it in your insula. You feel like in your gut that oh my gosh, that's a neurological mechanism. And so, increasingly, I think we're going to be seeing neuroscientists. Uh, they're, they'll be able to forecast our financial decision making based on what's happening in our brains. And they look at studies um, of identical twins. And when they separate identical twins, they find that they invest in a similar manner, right, between stocks, bonds, and cash, and currency. And of course, genetics isn't the only thing, but genetics has a strong influence, not just on how we spend, but even our credit scores. In one study, they found that there's this one gene, and those who have one variant of the gene are more likely to be risk averse, have fewer credit lines, and have higher FICO scores, have higher credit scores. And just the inverse of that, if you have that another, cop, another variant of that gene. So it shows that genes can help influence our credit score in a very statistically significant way.